knowledge adventure. Have fun. Get smart. Rocky54167 here. First off, I tried to originally shoot this using Hypercam and this microphone to record my voice, but unfortunately Hypercam, when, when I imported it to Sony Vegas, when the video was shortened by two minutes and went faster, but the audio was kept at the original length. So this was the best way I could shoot the video. First off, I know a couple of you guys are probably surprised that I'm shooting another video, seeing how when I come back I only post two videos and then I disappear again. But I don't plan on doing it this time. I only got five weeks left of college, and I plan on being, and I plan on getting back into the swing of the videos a bit more. Second off, last night, my uh, featured video right now, I had posted links to download the Packard Bell Knowledge Adventure on my DOS games. Now, a couple of people had questions about it, and I decided to answer the most common question about the ISO file using these. Now. A couple of people said they didn't know what an ISO was, and they said stuff like they would learn how to use it, or it would take them a while, so I decided to make a video and explain exactly what it was. An ISO is like taking a picture of something, in, in a way, or the best way to describe it, it's like ripping music from a CD. You have, when you rip music using iTunes, it goes to your computer, and then you can burn that onto another disc. That would, I did was I ripped the contents of this disc and I made an image of it like taking a picture. So now all you need is an ISO burner, bur burn the image to the CD and it you'll be able to play the game or the games I had posted or you can mount it with using a program like Damien Tools. I believe Damien Tools will work if you mount up the emulated drive. I've heard from numerous people that that works. I have not yet tried it because I still use the original discs, my original Packard Bell discs. So what I, in an essence, did, took a picture of these by ripping it and put it out. Now all you need to do is find a free burner. There's lots of them. Or you might already have a burner and not realize it. Or mount it. What you can do to burn this, the ISO image of this, onto a CD, you need is lots of free ISO burners, but to name a few, there's what I have, Nero, or what I used to use, Magic ISO, and then there's Power ISO. That's only really just to name a few. But there is a free one out there which works great. Let me pull it up. Here we go, CD Burner XP. This is the free software I use. It is completely free. You gotta type in CD Burner XP. Now for Macs, I don't know, but I'm sure if you were to Google Mac ISO Image Burner, you could find it. But right there is what you're gonna do to burn this on the CD. I'm pretty, I'm not sure if this is compatible with Macs, but like I said, go on the internet, search free ones. There's hundreds of free ISO Image Burners. I'm sure you can find one for Mac. So let's close this out. Now another, the main point of this video is let's go back to my second video. Hold on a second. Let's go down just a bit. Should have been a bit more prepared. I'm sorry about that. Go through all my videos until we get to them. Here we go, my second video. How to install a DOS game from a CD on DOSBox. Now, I originally didn't have microphone equipment, I was just, this camera acted up a couple of years ago on my old computer, because my old computer didn't have uh, enough memory, and so I did a raw video from Hypercam, explaining it as you can see right there, before I had gotten familiarized with the DOSBox recorder. Keep in mind, I made this video about a couple days in advance before the 3D body videos. So, I did it the most direct way I knew how to do it, but a lot of people got confused from this, and hopefully this video will help. Alright, so, to get a taste of what the old video looked like, first off, you're going to go to My Computer, and you're going to go to your local disk C. Now, you're going to need a folder in here that's going to emulate for your DOS box, your C drive. Here's where I keep all my Packard Bell stuff in, or Windows 3, yeah, the Packard Bell Windows 
Here's my original DOS folder, which was entitled DOS. Here's the failed one I keep on using. DOS games. Long story there. So I'm going to delete that. And first off, you're going to need to create a folder. So you can emulate that on DOSBox. If you plan on emulating Windows 3.1, which I do plan on making a video of that, you can name your folder 3.1. You can name it DOS. You can name it DOS games. You can name it old DOS games just as long. You can name it anything just as long as it's not over eight characters because DOS does not support that. So now this folder, I'm going to name it DOS games for the video. And there you go. This is going to be your emulated C drive on DOSBox. So now that we got that done, let's go to DOSBox itself. And now I'm going to move to the DOSBox portion of the video. I would download, first off before I forget, I would download DOSBox.74. It's the best way to emulate old DOS games. It emulates them exactly like an old DOS, or like it would on an old DOS computer. This is just my personal opinion. And now we're cutting to the DOS part of the video. Uh, now we are capturing a DOS box video. I'm not using Hypercam anymore. You switch now so you can see and hear the full results. Now, remember that folder you set up? In order for this to work, you're going to have to mount that folder. So, this is the key steps in DOSBox. This is where people get confused at. So you're going to type in mount cc slash. Type in exactly what I'm posting on the screen. Sorry about that. It's my stupid cell phone. So anyways, now, that folder you created, whatever you name it, DOS games, DOS, whatever you want to name it, as long as it's under 8 characters, you're going to mount it like that, and that's going to become your C drive. Now you need to mount, depending on whether you're using Damien tools or not, which it still should file the same, is when you insert your CD in there, the reason why I said Damien tools is because some people could be coming directly from the other video with the ISO not burning it or if you actually still have an original copy of your game well then you're going to put it in the CD-ROM drive and now you're going to mount that CD-ROM drive is mount DD slash negative T CD-ROM that's what you do to mount the CD-ROM drive now I've been told that Damien tools will work with DOSBox mounting wise but I've always burned my ISOs onto CDs and right now we're actually using one of my original discs, 3D Body Adventure. Now the next step is to install, now that we have these two things successfully installed, the next step is going to be to install the games. You have your C drive mounted and you have your D drive mount mounted. Here's where I used to run in the problems at. So you're going to type in D slash run, then you're going to type in, now this will vary between any game. It could be either install or setup, or it could be another weird file name, but mostly they are install or setup. And when I mean another weird file game is these games have installed and WW or something like that. So for, in this case, it's install. And here is the Knowledge Adventure CD install program. Now most DOS games will come up to a screen like this. And now there's an about. That's basically like a manual of what the game's going to be or install the game. Well, we want to install the game. So now it's going to take you to a blank screen. Here it says 3D Body Adventure and it'll tell you where it's going to install at. And right there it's already got your C drive mounted instead of your Z drive. Now where I used to run into problems at was I would mount the CD-ROM drive but I would not mount the folder drive because I had been misunderstanding a step and that's where a lot of people get confused on DOSBox. So as long as it says C and whatever the name of the game is, is you're good. You push enter and now you have to wait. Well, install copies of files to your hard disk. There we go. Installation complete. Now 
most of these cards are going to work. The Packard Bell sound card is what I use. There's the Sound Blaster and Compatibles. Those four will work. Now this game didn't come loaded with all the other ones. If you prefer to use another one and you have the uh, drivers for them, go ahead and use them. But Sound Blaster, the Ravel sound card, that it's basically a take on the Sound Blaster, the Packard Bell sound card. Another Ravel card, which is like just got better sound, a Gravis card. This program basically supports any of them. So we're going to use the Packard Bell sound card and we'll hear the good results. The problem with this is that you're going to hear it. Well, this is, you're going to, I'll explain after. Knowledge Adventure. Have fun. Get smart. Now, like I said, DOSBox. Point four or seven four emulates the music the best I've heard it and the way it exactly the way it used to sound on my old Packard Bell computer. One probably going to hear with this video is in that part you're going to hear an echo because I'm recording the the, uh, the talking part live on the microphone and I'm recording this from uh, the DOS box recorder. Now once that's done, your setting should be complete. Just play that one more time. And then the digitalized knowledge test. adventure. Have fun. Get smart. Now, DOS, like I said, DOSBox emulates them all, so you could save settings and exit. Now it's going to please wait. Now saving sound and music configuration. Now, back in the day of DOS computers, I think I read somewhere that when Windows 3.0 came out, keep in mind I was born a year after that. Biggest back then when Windows 3.0 first came out was 30 megabytes. I could be wrong. So back then, 6.6 .6 megabytes was a lot. Now our Packard Bell, the one that my uncle had purchased in 1995, was 2 gigabytes. So back then, 6.6 .6 megabytes was a lot. But now computers are about a terabyte. So I don't think it's going to hurt to install the full effects because your computer should be able to support it. Actually, DOSBox will be able to support it. Now, setup is complete. You will mostly get these when you install any type of uh, DOS game. Now, if you want to read the about, just showing what it looks like. I doubt any of you would want to read that. Now, quit. Now, you'll notice that DOSBox has your uh, 3D Body Adventure folder already there. So, if you want, you can go straight to the game. Knowledge Adventure Interactive Book Engine version 4.1, copyright 1993. And it was a success. And there you have it, folks. That is how you install a CD ROM game on DOSBox. I hope this is a hell of a lot better than my last video. As you can see, this game is completely emulated. Some tips so on the game is F or Control and F12 to speed up CPU cycles because it's set at 3,000, but some games demand more. And or some demand or some only demand 3,000. I can tell you right now, 3D Body Adventure, 3D Dinosaur Kid Zoo demand or 3D Body Adventure. Or, yeah, the ones I was going to name 3D Body Adventure, Kid Zoo, 3D Dinosaur Space, and Undersea Adventure, especially Undersea Adventure, needs the most CPU cycles to get the game running and mess around with it. You remember what speeds the videos were, you remember how fast something went. Yeah, I can still remember some of that, but then again, I have some Windows versions of these games to reference that too. Anyways, like I said, I hope this video was a bit clearer than my last one. I hope it was more straightforward. Anyways, this is Rocky54167 signing out.